subscribe and ring the bell yeah so but you need to pay attention you need to pay attention to your opponents and whenever for example like this hand is, is so obvious this hand is very obvious it's like here when this guy bets into three people what's his range come on let, let's let's take this let's take this step by step because that's how you should think a hand that is exactly how you should think a hand step by step uh he bets into three people what does he have well I come on be, be mr set, be mr uh, detective come on <laughs> but now I, I know he had a set yeah yeah but you put him on his whole range when he bets into three people so he's 11 he only called once out of 10 hands so he's probably a bit tighter with, with his calls so what is he so, call what is he called pre-flop okay so this is how you should be thinking about a hand what does he call here what can we put him on we can restrict his range the, the whole the whole process of the hand gives you clues upon the opponent's the opponent's hand or range so whenever he calls here he calls 10 out of he calls one time out of 10 times okay so it's kind of like it, it's close to 10% range, but we can estimate that at a lot of pocket pairs, suited broadways, maybe some offsuit, like ace queen or king queen offsuit. And suited broadways, I mean, some suited connectors. It's like I'd put him on somewhere around ace queen suited, king queen suited, uh, ace jack suited, maybe even ace 10 suited. Um, queen jack, king queen, uh, jack 10, 10 9, some suited connectors. And some suited aces because it's multi-way and pocket pairs. Somewhere around jacks to deuces. That's kind of what I put him on. We flat, he donks into. Okay, so now what could he have? He could have jacks. He could have tens, sevens, sixes. I honestly don't think. It's like his, 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 his donk is pretty small. So he might have the ace of clubs and want to see a turn for free. And he might have 8-9. Eight, 8-9 nine. Eight, nine with a club or without one. It's just, he's just knocking for protection. Okay. So that's, that's exactly what he's doing here with the set or with 8-9. So you raise. At this point, he's never going to call you with 8-9. He's usually going to fold. Because you, you just sent a message that you raised four way. You just sent a message, hi, I'm strong. So what do you usually raise here with? You raise with, um, you raise with seven, sixes, tens. Maybe you called with the big blind, so you can have a lot of king x of clubs, ace x of clubs. So you raise with those, right? Um, what do we, what else do you raise? Did I did I put a mark on it? Did is my range good, or do you have other hands that you raise here with? No, I think that that's pretty much it. So yeah, flushes and sets. That's kind of it. Yeah. Okay, so he puts you on that. But let's say he doesn't put you on that. Let's say he puts you... But it just screams flush. When you raise there, it just screams flush. Okay. Because he bets so small, you want more value. It just screams flush. He flats. And then turn comes a five. And I just I just spotted, looking again in, at this hand, I just spotted your mistake. And why I lost this hand. And he checks again, and you bet he calls again. So now when he calls, I'm pretty sure that it's not the Ace of Clubs. Because I don't think he called that much with the Ace of Clubs on turn. Right? He's getting 30% odds. I don't think he's a big fan of implied odds. If, if, he, if he hits another club, he's not getting implied odds from you if you have a set. Right? It's super, super obvious. It's like four clubs, you're never going to call with a set there. Yeah. Uh, only if it boats. So... He's, he never has the ace of clubs here. And then comes on the river. He donks. This is now now that I explained the hand, it's obvious, right? Yeah. So like you're on the flop. The the pro the only problem is that on the flop you're screaming flush. And but the other problem is that you raise so small. Always, always remember this. Always when raising for value, pot raise. Okay. Okay. So I should be raising like around uh eight eight dollars here. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking I'm thinking more along the lines of uh you should raise a sizing that you can shove the turn with after that. Or you can bet enough on the turn so he doesn't have implied odds. Okay. 
So if you raise to 8, he calls, pot is 20 on the turn, you have around, I don't know, like 29 left. You can even shove that turn for protection. You need to protect your hand. Shove any non-club, non-pair board turn. So you have a flush and you need yeah. to protect it. And also shoving looks sometimes bluffy. So he's gonna he's gonna call you with his pocket tens or pocket sevens or pocket sixes. Excuse me for just one sec. Yeah. One sec, I need to tell my friend. I, I bought a new monitor. <laughs> that I need to tell him that um it's like we we're 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 set for a CS game after this. So uh <laughs> Uh, I bought a new monitor today and I want to test it out. So I told him, okay, let's play some CS. All right. As in Counter Strike, probably. Yeah, Counter Strike Global Offensive, yeah. Yeah, yeah you play? Yeah, played a bit, but haven't played like for, I don't know, like three months or so. Oh, I, I, was, I, was, I was playing kind of like back in the days when it was Counter Strike like 1.1 1. <clears throat> 1 and 1. 1.3, then 1. 1.4, 1. 1.5, 1. 1.6. 1. 1.6 was the last, obvious, but yeah, I did. I also played those games b back in the day. Yeah, there was there was quite a lot. I was playing quite a lot. My parents restricted me at some point because I lied to them, so they res restricted me from the PC, and I was I was kind of like going uh, incognito in these internet cafes. My father actually told me that he'd look for me in internet cafes, so I'd go to these really, really shady ones at the at the the, the limit of the uh, the limit of the city <laughs> to play. <laughs> I took it that yeah, I took it that far. It was yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was awesome because I had a lot of friends that were playing and I actually yeah. met a lot of people through that game. So it was it was cool. It was cool. I actually met my my friend. I met him through that game. We were in the same city. Now he's now he's very 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 far. And this is the only way I can I can kind of like uh, socialize with him. Okay, so. Okay, so, uh, where were we? Analyzing the hand That's... from the opponent's point of view. So, you're you're supposed to sometimes just just look through look for for the hand, and look at what the opponent thinks, right? And you're supposed to actually go through this while you're playing, okay? So you're really, really, really supposed to think hard about what your opponent thinks about your hand and why is he reacting this way, right? Uh, can you, can you perhaps uh, find a hand where I was out of position? I mean, can you can you filter this in Holy Manager right? because yeah. I, I don't really know. So uh, hands where I was out of position uh, and uh, flopped like. Top pair, so, but I don't know. There you if, go. If I flop a set, it's easy. But if I get a mediocre hand, uh, this would this would actually be okay, I think. <laughs> nah, this is just this is a four bet pot. It's a lot harder to to yeah. analyze. But but okay, it's it's this one's actually very easy. So he three bets, and you called four bet. Three bets big, okay. So seventy five. This is supposed to be two twenty five. Right, so it's not 280. He threw bets way yeah. too big, and then you called four bet him. So when you called four bet him, and he sees your stats, you have 243 hands on him, so he has 243 hands on you. So he probably knows around which values your your um four your three is. your 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 three bet and your called four bet. Yeah. He's putting you on aces and kings. When you called four bet here, he's putting you on aces and kings. He decides to flat, so he has to put around how much? 370? Okay. He doesn't have yeah. set mining god, so when he flats, he sometimes maybe he doesn't believe you with queens. Uh, ace king suited, kings and aces. Okay. So when he actually decides to put that money in, that's his range. If when you hit this flop, you're actually dead because aces destroy you, ace king just chops, queens destroy you, and kings destroy you. Though there's only one, although there's only one, uh, one uh, <laughs> one combo of kings. So you're never supposed to bet at any point in the hand. You're supposed to call turn and then fold the river if he jumps. Here, I, what are you getting value from? Nothing. He doesn't have ace queen. He doesn't have... I don't know. Even king queen is there. It's like, why are you betting to get ace king to fold? You never... Ace king never fold here. He's not that smart. Check. 
Like, he has queens destroyed, aces destroyed, kings destroyed, ace king chop. King queen suited, you're dead. Ace queen suited, not calling. You're, you're even holding the ace of diamonds. Never bet here. Like, you invested the rest of your stack for nothing. You, you just set, set that money. You're not getting called by worse. You're not, sorry. Yeah, you're not getting called by worse. You're never folding better. So when you bet this, you're only getting called by, you're getting called by all these range, but you're very, very much behind. Right, so he called and then you jam river. And you don't think like, okay, he called my, he three bet versus that guy and called my fees jacks? No. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what, are you, what, what, are, what does he have, right? Yes, yeah. you're dead. Right, so check. Check all turn, KC bluffs once with whatever, and then if he if he jumps the river, you're dead. Always. Right? When you explain it or put it that way, it makes perfect sense, but in that moment, I, I really don't yeah, know what, what yeah, I was he, thinking. Yeah, but this comes, this comes a bit with experience. So, and also not playing four tables of Zoom. After you play around yeah. a, a lot online, then you'll be able to do this thought process at around four tables of Zoom. Also, being rested helps. Um, also playing, also playing quite a lot helps, right? It's like, kind of like playing, like practice makes perfect, right? Playing quite a lot helps with your thought process, like live thought process. And you're going to get, you're going to get the most out, out of your play. If you start playing maybe one table and start thinking about ranges. Okay. He called my four, but ding, like when, when someone calls your four bet and he looks reggish, this should be a red, li red light right above your head. Like yeah. alarm, right? Alarm alerts. He's got, he's either doesn't believe me and he's got like Queens or ace king suited, maybe ace queen suited once in a blue moon. But <laughs> most of the time he expect when you called four bet and you have yourself 4.8% three bet, then it looks like aces or kings. Honestly, like I don't, I don't mind. I don't mind the cold four bet. Why do we call four bet here? Because you have blockers, and because this guy three bets a lot, so he's gonna fold quite a lot, right? Also, this guy, you block aces and kings. This is an insane spot. Like you're you're putting down, you're putting down like six twenty five to win ten point fifteen. So your break even fold frequency is around like sixty percent. Okay, so it's insane. Yeah, it's good. They're gonna fold more than sixty percent. This guy three bets quite a lot. How much does he three bet from the button? He three bets. Oh my god! <laughs> Forty-two point one. Okay, over nineteen tries. Okay, and this is the guy that he will three bet a bluff against the most because he has eighty-eight percent fold to three bet. Okay, so yeah, it makes sense. But when he does this, he doesn't think. He never thinks that you think that you, he's three bet bluffing a lot versus this guy because he folds a lot to three bets. No, he actually has a hand. This is not, he doesn't know that you also have hands on him. So this is missing yeah. from his information. So he actually has a hand. And also, no, 25 Rex don't think this deep. They don't think, okay, he knows that I'm three bet bluffing against that guy because he folds a lot. So he's going to four bet. No way. <laughs> no way. So, yeah, this is kind of like a level seven. Yeah. So. Obviously, when he flats, he has a hand. It doesn't matter if you're out of position. Whenever you 3-bet, um, whenever you 3-bet against a reg, offsuit broadways, and hit top pair, you're always supposed to check. This is a 4-bet pot. Okay. It's, it's the, 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 uh, the requirements are even higher if it's a 4-bet pot, right? So you're not supposed to. Next time, please don't give his, don't give your stack away. Think about the ranges that he could have. That twenty-two dollars, or let's say he bets six on turn, that that sixteen dollars should be yours. Folding in poker when you're behind is equal to winning as much as value betting. So that's why that's why you should you should find folds there. Let's see the say queen hand. Uh, you're in position here, okay? But we can we can definitely learn from this. So bet flop, and call, and bet turn, and call, and bet river. Ugh, <laughs> this is a sucky spot. Um, why do you bet the river? This is very very interesting. I don't actually think that he calls with jacks on the turn. 
So he, he has only a queen. You're just betting to chop mostly. So like he could have a flush out that that missed and he's not calling you with, or he's not calling with jacks. Like I see, I see your thin value bet, right? But he's never gonna call you with. He's never gonna call you with jack. So it's it, to me, it's just so obvious that he has a ten when he shoves this river. So it's kind of like it's kind of like okay, what does he call? Okay, let, let's go through ranges, right? Let's go through the ranges. So he's twenty four nineteen, right? So he's gonna call. He's in the big blind. He's gonna call with a lot of broadways. Okay. So like, I'll, I'll show you that if you go step by step through this hand, you're gonna see that on the river he can have only a ten. That's it. He doesn't, or, and also he doesn't bluff all in his missed his missed draws. And he, and also when you triple barrel, he expects you to have a queen minimum or kings or aces, or even even queens. So he's not expecting you to fold on the river. It's so obvious. He's he's a reg. Uh, he's not expecting you to fold on the river when you triple barrel there. So bet sixty and he calls. You have two queen ten, right? Uh, he calls with a lot of pocket pairs, Broadway cards, pocket pairs, high Broadway offsuit, maybe all Broadway suited, and some suited connectors. What does he call the flop with? Flush draws, queen x, ten x, deuces. Maybe he raises, but uh, queen ten. I think he also calls, so just flat. And now he would just check call queen 10. I don't know why he checks the river with the 10, to be honest, because you just double barrel. So it could be maybe he's maybe he thinks that you will bet a queen and then he's going to shove on you, which is what most wrecks do. But be smart. Be smart. What does he call the turn with that you actually beat with your race queen on the river? Yeah, no nothing. It's he doesn't call jacks here. He'd probably th even three bet jacks preflop. Maybe. So I don't think I don't think he calls okay, he calls Jacks once on the flop, you bet the turn again. Ten's there, Queen is there. It's it's kinda like obvious fold for Jacks. Nines, whatever, everything smaller just folds easy. So on the river, you're and also even if he calls with Jacks, you're never getting called on the river. So you're kinda like when you're doing this, you're kinda like, okay, brother, like like it's it's kinda like thin value, right? It's exactly thin value. But from what? Okay. So yeah. <laughs> you're supposed to you're never getting value from anything when you double barrel that board and you you bet this way and you're never getting flush toss to bluff you because they don't expect you to fold the queen and that's the minimum that you have if you if you have a if you have a if you have kings if you have kings or if you have um aces He's never expecting you to fold. He's never expecting you to fold a queen. So if you have kings here, yes, bet. If you have uh, aces, yes, bet. Right? And yeah. bet, bet a big amount. Bet because he's yeah, falling I with know. the queen. But when he jumps, he never has a queen. He just flat yeah. versus triple barrel. So it's so obvious, <laughs> so obvious that he has. He always has it down here. That was jack that. Yes. Uh, check on the river is actually very interesting, but I think it's actually extremely good because when you double barrel, you're gonna be tempted to bet the third time your uh, heart draw if you had the flush draw, and he's getting value from that. You're always gonna bet, so like usually regs always bet queens here, always bet kings and aces, right? So kings and aces, I don't blame, but queen you should always be checking back the river. Doesn't really matter what kicker, doesn't matter now. So yeah. he never has jacks, so you shouldn't bet a queen here. Kings, yeah, sure, he has a lot of combos of queens. But it makes perfect sense for him to check on the river because people just bet too much and he's going to shove and it's going to look, maybe sometimes it looks, your opponent just levels himself into thinking that you just missed a hard draw. Or you have a queen and you do that, why would you subject yourself to rake? Right? Yeah, yeah. And he just flat with the queen. He's not happy to get it in against aces and kings. Or queens. So yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a tough spot. But once you hear kind of like how things go down. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't really make any sense to bet the queen on the river right now, right? Yeah, it, it, it's actually funny now when I look at it. Yeah, so for two mistakes. It, it's it, yeah. it's funny how stupid it, it it was. It's it's not. It's not. It's not. It's just it's just you're playing too many tables and you're not thinking over your opponent's range. If it's a fishy guy, you should bet. 
right? If it's a fish, he calls with jacks on the turn. He calls with jacks on the river. This bet is actually, I would bet like half the pot against a fishy guy. And but I, I think about again if it if it's a loose pass, if it's so hard to to fold the river, it's it's insanely hard hard if he jams because he might jam a queen. So you have no idea. But against this guy, it's it's super 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 obvious. Okay, let's see another ace king. How uh, I think you went all in. I think you went all in here. <laughs> Cold four bet, call five bet, easy fold, easy fold. Again, like when you have called four bet. Your your opponents expected to have aces kings, not not, not ace king. Okay, so also this guy is three betting a lot tighter. Don't don't think that his three bet is six point seven three. It's not static. It's not. He's not like only three betting six point three any position versus any position. Okay, so whenever you're like, you look here, you see three bet. Okay, zero from the button. But it's not going to be zero. It's going to be something. You don't have enough hands yeah. on him. But against yeah. early positions, they're usually going to be tight. And look at what this guy is opening. He probably has some hands on him. 4%. 4%. 4 freaking percent. He 3 bets against 4%. You're dead with your ace king. <laughs> this guy, I think he has queens plus an ace king. When you 4 bet ace king, he's only going to get it in with kings and aces. And he's not folding that much. This guy calls. I think he has queens. And when this guy shoves, you're dead. You have king's aces every every time. Every time king's aces. Every time king's aces. And this guy might might surprise you with aces or something like that. He just flats. It's weird. These guys sometimes play weird. Okay, you have no idea how they're... Oh, look. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I can't wait to see this showdown. I cannot wait to see this showdown. Aces and kings. I was sure. I was sure. I was yeah. sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, my God. That's so... That sucks so hard. Like okay, Ace King blocks aces and kings, but not permanently. So they it just yeah. blocks half of them. But in this situation, it's purely obvious. It's like okay, this guy, this guy. Oh, so I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This guy limped. I'm really, really sorry. This guy limped, and this guy isos. Sorry, I, I totally misread the hand. But when you three bet his iso range against this guy, then you're obviously on a value range, right? It's like you know he's on his value range because he isos. And then you three bet this guy. I'm sorry, I was I was thinking in Olmet then. That's why yeah. uh, I kind of got confused. But when this guy calls and this guy shoves, yeah, he could have. Look, he could have. He could have kings plus. Uh, he could have queens plus an ace king. But it's still not a call here, and I'll tell you why. Because you don't. You're not getting the odds. So you're getting thirty nine percent. But, and your equity versus queens plus an ace king with ace king offsuit. God, this monitor is so bright. I have to get used to it. Uh, is thirty nine percent. But you also get raked. And sometimes Dick, this guy might show up with something funky, so that fucks you up. <laughs> because your equity versus Queens plus an ace king and kings just drops down a lot. So, yeah, so well, let's, let's, take, let's take this, let's take this out, of, out of equation. So you're 39. Let's say this guy folds every time, okay? But I, I highly doubt it because he has like 15 left, so I don't think he's folding. But he might have something like jacks, which is awesome. Um, but you're 39% against this range. So when you're getting 39 percent to call you're actually getting raked a bit at the end like five percent if you win so you actually need around 42. so what you what you can call here is kings and aces and that's usually it if you have ace king suited it's really close i i could find the flat with ace king suited you're getting 42 so, but with queens actually surprisingly ace king suited is better than, better than queens in this spot so i'd call with kings Kings plus ace king suited, but that's so, that's kind of it. yeah. Uh, you would three bet here, but always fold on this show. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. With ace king would... offsuit, yes. I would also find three bets with king queen offsuit with ace queen offsuit because I block a lot of his, this guy's uh, value range. So yeah, I would three bet ace king offsuit, king queen offsuit, nines plus. Uh, I'm not going to stack off with nines plus, but he's not going to shove so often, right? So I'm actually three betting nines plus and so on for value. I'm flatting with a lot of suited aces, almost all suited aces except for ace king that I'm three betting. I'm flatting with pocket pairs from ace to deuces. I am not flatting with suited connectors because we're gonna get dominated quite a lot. And I think that's kind of it. And, and some and some suited broadways like king queen suited, uh, queen jack suited, jack ten suited, ten nine suited. That's it. That's that's my flatting range here. 
But my 3 betting range is Ace King offsuit, King Queen offsuit, Ace Queen offsuit because I'm getting a lot of folds from my blockers and I don't really want to play King Queen offsuit 3 way. It kind of sucks. And um, I'm fighting with the suited though because I'm, I'm, I, I can call a lot of turns. For example, if flop comes something like 10-9-3 with a heart and I have King Queen a heart, I can call once. I can call a lot of turns. Any, I have 10 outs on, on the turn basically. Like Jack, Jack gives us gives us the nuts. Any king or queen might be live. Um, if we have a heart, if you get a heart, we can call once more. He's usually gonna stop on the ace of hearts or some some other high heart, so it's it's fine. But with king queen offsuit, it's a lot harder. Yeah, I'm listening. No, no, that that's pr pretty much it. Yeah. So, so so, yeah. No, no, that that's it. Uh, I, I'm with you. <laughs> okay. So in this spot, uh, I I show you in this spot here, and I'm I'm not three betting ace king because I want to get it in. That's that's traditional mentality. Three bet ace king because it's strong hand. You're getting it in and blah blah blah. No. <laughs> uh, so my three betting range would be nines plus, and ace king. And if if this guy no we have a fish in the pot so I'm not gonna three bet suited connectors sometimes I three bet suited connectors because you can't really flat them because you're getting dominated but if if both guys if 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 it's a very very big possibility that both guys will fold then I'm gonna do that but no against these guys I just want to keep it I just want to keep it tight because this guy will have a tight range and but I'm still getting value if I three bet with king queen offsuit ace queen offsuit and ace king offsuit and my flatting range will be let me just clear this my flatting range will be this these all suited aces pocket pairs below eight and 10 nine sorry 10 nine suited and that's kind of it honestly i don't love i don't love to flatten that spot with ace jack offsuit i might three bet it if i if i think if i think i'm getting enough fold equity and i might also flat king jack sorry king jack suit but that's kind of it that's kind of it because I expect I expect uh, the ISO ISO Razor guy to have a strong range against this twenty nine percent limper, right? And also we can we can uh, we can figure out we only have only have thirty one hands, so we can't really figure out limping by position. He seems to be limping from everywhere, kind of like same type same stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So he's against like twenty nine percent range. He will raise around fourteen percent. So against that, when we're at the middle, I will call. It's like suited hands. Offsuit, he's gonna be folding quite a lot that 14%. But when he jams, he just has queens plus an ace king, I think. So, and especially against you, it's like you have to see players as they see you. This guy has 200 hands on you, he expects you to to four bet there with queens plus an ace king. So, when he jams, I actually think he has kings and aces because you three bet so tight, and that's the problem, right? That's why that's why people don't play back at you quite a lot when you three bet, and that's why they're only gonna be four betting usually kings plus. But that's your advantage because you can start three by bluffing them, and they'll they're 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 still gonna have the same stats as as from before. Okay, until your until your general three bet grows, you have the advantage over them of they them thinking that you're actually a tighter three better, and just basically just um just uh uh folding quite a lot. So this is your advantage. You can start three betting king queen offsuit ace queen offsuit. And against later later position openers, eight jack offsuit, king jack offsuit, queen jack offsuit because of the blockers. And whenever you hit top pair, remember the ace king hand. Remember their calling ranges are tight. So whenever you hit top pair, check always and f try to figure their range. Try to put them when they call three bets. Usually it's jacks, queens, ace queen suited, king queen suited. Sometimes ace king. Whenever they call four bets. <laughs> It's <laughs> especially cold four bets. It's really strong. But whenever they call four bets, it's usually ace king or queens. Okay, not not cold four bets. Normal normal four bets. Yeah. Right. So you have to try. This is the best thing that you can do to play against them perfectly. You have to try to put them on a range. That's that's basically what you can do. That's it. Okay, okay, okay. Right, so uh, any any one... questions? Maybe one yeah, hand, yeah. 
something came to my mind, but mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I just yeah. forgot about it. It was like 15 seconds ago. I, I knew what, what I wanted to ask you. Uh, just give me a second. Next right time, next time when you want to ask something, just ask. Oh. Just, just interrupt me. Interrupt okay. me and ask. Uh. Yeah, I, I hate it when this happens. I I just can't remember. It's I okay if you remember at some point. Just type it in the chat and I'll answer. Okay, I'll answer I'll when I'm when I'm in Skype. Probably remember it around 3 a.m. when I go to bed. Yeah, perfect. It's 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 fine then. It's <laughs> it's fine then. No problem. No problem. Absolutely no problem. Subscribe and ring the bell.